Hello everyone. So I've got another pin review here and uh, today I have the FP Nibs Ronda fountain pen. So there's not a lot of reviews out there on this pen. Uh, I know that uh, Pablo has uploaded just kind of some really just showing off the pen so to speak and I noticed that there is I think a review on fountain pen network on the pen but nothing really uh, as far as a video really going into more of a detailed uh, look of it. So um, I really liked the look of this pen when I went, when I first off, when I saw the video and then I went to FP Nibs website, I really liked the look of the material and you can definitely tell that it is somewhat of an oversized pen and I'll do some sizing comparisons to give you guys an idea. I blue is my favorite color green is kind of my second favorite color if, if I was to say so I really liked the green look they do uh, Pablo does offer another FP nibs pen I, I can't remember the name of it but it is in an orange acrylic and it is an attractive pen as well but this one really really spoke to me now it comes in this nice I think you know cardboard type sleeve with FP nibs written on it. And one thing I did find interesting, so we have Rhonda here, and I, I swear, and I could be wrong, but on the website, it's spelled with an H. Now you can tell this is like handwritten, which I actually think is cool. Um, and so maybe just an, an, a mistake on the spelling. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Um, once you slide it out, I can get it to slide out, of course. It's got a nice little cutout here, really secures the pin very well. This was for, of course, the uh, converter, and then here's the cutout for the pin. So that's, if you were to purchase this pin, this, that is how you'd receive it. Now, as far as pricing for the pin, um, it's around 30 euros for the actual price of the pin. Once you combine taxes and shipping, you're looking at around 60 euros, and translating that to US dollars, about $67. So when you put that into perspective, you can get a Conklin All-American for around the same price point, usually anywhere between $65 to $80. So the question is, is this pen just as nice or nicer than that? Because I really, this pen in some respects reminds me a little bit of the Conklin All-American just by the materials, the weight of the pen, and the overall size as well. So real quick, let's jump into the actual parts of the pen and talk about those. So once you get up close, you really see that green. Now, one thing I've noticed in pictures and also on the video, it kind of gives it a little bit of a bluish look in a way. But when you see this pen in person, there is no questioning the color. It is green. It is kind of a forest green color very attractive, has some nice chatoyance to it, uh, light really reflects off of it very well, kind of has that, that sparkly look that a lot of us really like with uh, high quality acrylics. Now it is it has that dual fold design, so you of course have you know flat ends on both the barrel and the cap. Another thing I like is you'll notice so our barrel is really fat and then it just kind of gradually tapers down to the end. I actually like that look of it. Now the clip is, is somewhat classic as well. Um, I think it's very functional. It's kind of got that Conklin style clip. I call it that because you'll notice you've got that metal part here and then it's faceted there. I don't know the fancy term for that, but it just reminds me of that. One thing I do like is, I know some people aren't huge fans of the metal balls on the clips, but you cannot complain about form and function. It's one thing I love about most of my pilot pins these type of clip designs slide in and out of uh, shirt pockets, thick materials, anything very easily. Uh, that's one thing I really, really like about this style clip. I also like the fact that it's recessed into the cap versus it being around the whole um, outside of the cap. I think it's a really nice clean look. Then we see that we actually have some FP NIMS branding here. So we see fpnibs.com and then we actually have their logo. Um, probably my least favorite thing about the pen, I would have much rather have liked to have seen something engraved in the cap band. It's not a deal breaker for me. I know some people might be a little bit annoyed by it, um, or just don't put branding on the, the, the outside of the pen at all. But that, that is one thing that's not my favorite. 
it kind of, I think, takes a little bit away from like the premium fill of the pen. Um, so just, just one thing to note. Now the cap band does not really have anything on it, but it is a nice wide cap band. I like the look of it. I also like the fact that it's at the end of the cap as kind of that reinforcement part. We have a slight step down, down to the barrel, and then again, just tapers down. And as I stated before, this is a big pen. I mean, it is not small by any means. So as far as uncapping it, it is an easy pen to uncap. It's another thing I do like about it. The threads do not take long. It takes literally a little less than half a turn to get the cap off of this pen. Now, we're gonna look at that section and that step down. So it does have a decent sized step down and it's not, it's a little bit sharp. The threads are, are nicely machined, but they're the step down, there's not a lot of, not a tremendous amount of threads there. So if you hold it up higher, you're gonna mainly fill that step down. One thing I do like is it has kind of, to me, a traditional section. It reminds me a little bit of a kind of vintage type section, but I like the fact that it's nice, it's girthy, it has that hourglass shape. I always hold the pen right here. For my size hands, my fingers, everything, this pen is a nice pen to write with. Um, you'll see I don't need to post this pen. It fits very nice in my hand. This section, I don't get a lot of hand fatigue when I'm using this pen, so it feels nice in the hand. Very, very comfortable. Now, you can post this pen, and you can see it right there. Now, it does not post very, it doesn't post extremely deep, but it does make it a little bit back weighted for me. Now, if you've got much larger hands, it may be pretty comfortable. Or if you happen to hold the pen up higher for any reason where you want a wider range from that paper contact from where you're actually holding the pen. The pen is very heavy and I'll kind of explain to you guys why it's so heavy. Now, obviously we know we've got, you know, all this metal and everything here, but the pen is a heavy pen. It's hefty, it's girthy. If you like big pins, this is a nice pin. Now, let's talk about the nib. So this pin takes a standard number six Yovo nib. Now, this is not the original nib that I actually got with this pin. I actually got a 14 karat gold nib with this pin, but I actually got that nib to put on another pin. But this nib is, is a number six Yovo. This is a still fine nib, as you can tell. So nothing really super you know, crazy or exciting. There's your Yovo feed there. It's a Yovo nib, it does a good job, it, it works very well. I wanted this pen to be kind of a workhorse pen and a daily rider that I could take to work and it, it performs it, in that function very, very well. Now taking off the barrel, of course you're gonna get some resistance here because you've got a O-ring right here, kind of similar to like a pin BBS pen that most of you are familiar with. Um, we've got a metal section here and stuff. Here is our converter. Everything works well. You can tell I've been writing with this pen a lot. Most of the ink's gone. I may even have to ink this up again before I do the writing sample. The converter fits down in there nicely. Now, one thing to note, there is a little bit of a gap though, and but it doesn't really wiggle around. You know, I was a little bit concerned when I first put the converter in is with this gap, I was worried if that was gonna maybe cause some flow issues. But for the most part, I haven't had really any issues with this pen. Um, I do at times get s some of the ink buildup. So if it's sitting in my pocket from this uh, direction, that ink really kind of builds up over here. But of course, normally if I just tap it a little bit, that ink flow goes back down. That will create an occasional hard start because of that. But that's if I haven't written with this pen for a couple days and I've had it sitting with the nib up. Um, there's no agitator in there to really kind of keep that, that ink flowing towards the, uh, the section. Now, another thing I wanted to show you guys is the barrel. And you might be able to see in there, and I'll grab, should have had it out already. All right, so I paused it momentarily so I could get my, my bore light here. And I, you guys can maybe see down in there just a little bit better. But you can see that there's actually metal inside of the actual barrel. And that really helps to kind of, you know, I, at first I was thinking maybe like reinforce this material, but this, this acrylic is nice and thick. You can tell by how the cut is here. I mean, it's, it's nice and thick. That metal just makes the pen more weighted. And I feel like it, it makes for, for a nice, 
weight in the hand. Again, it, it feels really nice when you're riding with it. Um, because of the weight and really how this section is designed, it's quickly becoming one of my favorite like workhorse styled pins. I don't get, a, again, a lot of hand fatigue. This section is just a perfect size for me. One other thing I want to show you, so the inner cap liner, this is uh, kind of see down in there. So it's a little bit of a weird design in the sense that the inner cap is down at the bottom, at least for my pin, is not flush completely with the actual cap. Now, why would that be important to, to mention? So when you go to cap this pin, one thing that I do find myself at times doing is if I put the nib really close, say it, it brushes up against the inside part of the cap, it will actually catch that lip. And I'll feel it, if I'm not paying attention, I'll catch that lip. And my only concern is if I am in a hurry or I really go to just you know put the cap on really fast, is either damaging the inner cap liner or possibly damaging the nib. Now, is that again a huge issue for me? No, but it is something I wanted to note. Um, I don't know if all of the FP nibs Rondas are like that as far as the inner cap liner, but it is something that I did want to note that could be a little bit of a, an issue if you were recapping the pen. All right, so up next, I'm going to do some sizing comparisons with some other pens so you guys can see those. And then once we're done with that, we will of course do some weights and measurements and then everyone's favorite, the writing sample. See you guys in a moment. Okay, so here we actually see some sizing comparisons here. Now, <clears throat> we're gonna start from the bottom and work our way to the top. So of course we have our FP Nibs Ronda here. And then right above that, we have the Conklin All-American and the Brownstone Finish. We have a Noodler's Neponset. And then because this is a very popular pen, we have the Pilot Metropolitan. So here it kind of gives you an idea of the FP Nibs pen, comparatively speaking to, in my opinion, two other somewhat oversized pens, especially the Noodler's Neponset. And you'll notice that overall length uh, the FP Nibs is larger than the All-American, as well as in girth. It, it is really a very large pen, and the All-American to me is not a small pen necessarily. And then overall length, it is very similar to the Neponset as well, and it even has the Neponset somewhat beaten in overall girth also. And the Pilot Metropolitan, fairly standard size pen. I, I find it a little bit on the smaller side, but I know a lot of people own that pen. So again, gives you a nice idea of the overall size. Now let's look at these pins. We can take a look at the sections and the nibs and compare those as well as them um, uncapped. All right, so here we see all four pins now uncapped. They're unposted, so we see them in that form as well. And here's where I think all four of them kind of take on a different um, style and look as well. Uh, and, and we'll talk about, so let's talk about the uh, sections uh, first and foremost. So. Um, the, I really like these two sections here uh, quite a bit. I, I enjoy riding with my Conklin All-American still. It is inked up actually right now. And um, my Noodler's Neponset, nice section, um, nice and, and, and long and everything. But I like how my fingers fit in the Ronda quite a bit. I like the fact that even though the All-American has that step down that it has, the section is a little bit more elongated, but it's not quite as girthy as the FP or the FP Nibs pen. And then my Pilot Metropolitan is probably my least favorite to write with. I know a lot of people love that pen, so I'm not trying to say that it's not a good pen. Just my least favorite to write with. I find the section a little bit too uh, skinny. Now get a little bit more of a closer look and also to kind of see the nibs as well. So these three here, uh, you could say are somewhat number six size nibs. Now we have the Omniflex nib on this All-American. We've got a Yovo number six here. And then of course we have that Noodler's uh, music nib here. And then this Pilot nib to me is more in the realm of like a number five size nib if we were doing it based off a Western nib sizing. I know Pilot has their own proprietary nib numbers, so I'm not gonna get into that. But again, kind of see those sections up close, the threads, how all of that works. Uh -huh. 
Now we'll see everything posted just real fast. Now I'm actually going to zoom out here some because I can even get this really fit into the screen. There we go. All right, so now we see all four pins posted. In my opinion, really these three pins don't need to be posted in order to write with them comfortably, but they are postable. They do post nicely. And you know, these two are definitely on the heavier side. I, I really like the weight of the Conklin All-American and I really enjoy the weight of the FP nibs. The, the Noodler's pin is, you know, that really, it's a nice look, but it's a very lightweight pin. Um, so if I was talking from a workhorse perspective and what just feels comfortable for my personal writing style, these two pins are very enjoyable to write with. So there you kind of see them in their posted form. Again, don't really think you need to post uh, the FP nibs pen, but you can write with it from that perspective. All right, so up next, we will post weights and measurements onto the screen so you guys can see that. And then of course, we will do a writing sample. I'll see you in a moment. Okay. Now, of course, I jumped right into this writing sample. I have not re-inked the converter. So we're gonna see how it does. If it performs poorly, I will just delete this and ink it and nobody will even know. All right, so as I stated before, this is the FP Nibs Rhonda. I'm gonna spell it with an H. Either way, it's right. You guys get the gist. Now I'm using a fine Yovo nib. The ink that I am using, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not 100% certain, but I'm about 95% certain. It is this ink here, so if you guys have questions. Uh, I need to get more of this ink. I is really, really love this green. They have other colors. Very cheap, I think I paid like $6 for this ink. Uh, it's made in Germany, it's a 30 mil bottle, so decent sized bottle. Like I said, I think I paid like six bucks for it and you can still buy it on eBay or at least the last time I looked, you could. All right, so we'll do a quick writing sample. Now the other cool thing is, if you order one of these pens, you can get whatever nib you want on here. Um, Pablo is of course a nibmeister. He can do just about anything you want. Um, so if you want a stub nib, if you want a, a specific grind, if you want a gold nib, if you want a flex nib, I mean, there are so many different things. I think that's another really cool thing. Now I've just got a vanilla fine steel nib on here. There's nothing really super special about this nib other than the fact it, it, it's perfect for work. And that's really what I kind of wanted to use this pen for. Uh, the, the nib does what I need it to do. Uh, it's not, again, not you know super crazy by any means, but it is a consistent writer. I can use it on all sorts of different types of paper. I don't have any issues with the nib whatsoever. As you guys could tell uh, when I showed you the converter, the nib is used, or this pen is used a lot. This, I'm already on my second uh, converter of ink and it, it's basically empty. So I'm gonna fill it up after this video. Now, as I stated before, with everything combined, you're gonna pay about 60 euros, which translates to around 67 US dollars, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm off on that, you guys can correct me in the comments. Now, the question is, is it worth that? In my assessment, yes. And why is that? So there's the FP Nibs Rhonda. Here's a Conklin All-American. So you would typically pay, like I said, anywhere between 65 to $80, depending upon where you buy it. Here is a Noodler's Neponset. You know, another oversized pen. This one's more of a flex pen. $75 for this pen. So, you know, 
are there other pins out there that I think are nice that are that are cheaper? Yes, there are. But I think this is a really cool pin. The fact that you can get a customized nib on it, or you can just go with a regular still nib, but even get like a stub or a broad or something else a little bit more exciting than the fine nib. You can do that as well. So I think it's worth every penny. What are a couple things I don't like about it? Not a huge fan of the logo. It's probably my least favorite thing. Uh, not a deal breaker again, but maybe do something different with the logo on future pens. That would be my one suggestion if that's possible. And the the other thing, that, and it's not really, it doesn't bother me, just a little bit of a worry is the inner cap liner, the way that it has that gap. Again, I have not had any issues with the nib drying out, so it seals up really nicely. I just always worry that I'm going to drive that nib in there and, and not be aware of what I'm doing and possibly damage the nib. But really, other than that, that is it. I enjoy the pen. Great pen to use. Uh, I think if, you're in, if you've been looking at it and you're interested in it, pull the trigger on it. I don't think you're going to be disappointed, especially if you want to get a really cool nib to go along with it. Uh, Pablo can definitely do that part. Well, this concludes this review. I hoped everyone that you enjoyed it. And until next time, I will see you later. Bye-bye.